Hey guys, how's it going? I'm going to continue on working on the 65 Carmen Ghia that I picked up a couple of days ago. Yesterday we went, brought it to the car wash while the engine was out of it and was still on the trailer and washed those areas with the inch of their life with a fresh washer at the car wash the best you can because it's winter time. Try to get rid of a bunch of the mouse piss that was in it. And uh, other than the headliner, it seems like it's fairly good. Then got on to some of the metal work. Started working on the rocker on the passenger side so that has been cut out and replaced there's the old and there's the new uh, again we're just trying to make a driver out of the car but that's it patched in and now today we're going to go pick up uh, where we left off and continue on back here the panel was made uh, very poorly it it, it was one panel that came all the way back here but there was no provision for the curve it kind of just dropped off here and the metal went to this point and just kind of went straight up and across so i cut it off and just used what we need for that and then we have right here the rest of that section that's pretty much how it was so you can see how useful that is let me pop you in a stand and we'll show you what we got all right, so on this one, we kind of left it open on again. We didn't finish welding it, so just so that we have a little bit of movement to, to match the panel that's going next to it. And the panel that's next to it, if, you, if I just lay it on the body, you can see, you know, if I try to attach it to the lip down there, you can see how far off it is as far as the bend is concerned. Or if you try holding it to the body, you can see how far off that is going to be from there. So I think we're just going to take a second to manipulate this panel so at least matches the profile of the body better and then we'll start hammering on the body see what disappears but i want to get this into the correct shape first all right so it's going to need more of a roll between these two points that the circle needs to kind of continue in that direction so this is where we're going to where we're going to concentrate on putting more of a bend in it not down here more up here let's see if we can add to that curve I'm going to try to avoid not putting a dent on there. What I should probably do is make a piece of wood up. Well, how much are we going to redo this? Maybe make a piece of wood up and sand a piece of wood that can lay flat and then, but sand a radius in it so it won't do that. Keep that in mind for future. That guy ain't exactly straight now, is it? How's it looking? To bend it on across the whole thing. I think we should check it. I do. Check your cam. Right, let's see how well this does. I can't lay it all the way in against the body because there's a, a, a mount right there. So we're trying to just you know, eyeball it on the angle. It actually looks pretty good, huh? We could probably go a little bit higher up, kind of where the smudge mark is there. And we'll give it a little more. Agree, or should we stop right there? I actually think we might be okay just like that. Yeah. Sold. Hey, what do you say? You make it rain. bottom lip actually feels this actually feels really good. let's cut 
we'll, we'll leave it proud for now. I, I felt we were probably just going to go right to this lip. That was the plan, but let's slice back to just outside that jack point for now. We feel we, feel we need to go more. And I don't know. I should, I'd call it. Let's slice it. That's the max we can go. That's the, that's the total height of that panel. Well, let's go cut it. Let's go cut the car back that far. I'm going to detour. Let's detour for that tubing hole. Here. Let's not clip that yet. That's a no. <laughs> uh, if this is all gone or all bondo, I'll probably do it in one panel. But I just don't want to have to recreate this hole. It's two different, uh, separate pieces of metal. I guess we can cut off the, maybe we can cut off the outside, leave this inner inner lip here. Yeah, it's gonna be a little... You either want to take the whole thing out or you won't take any of it out, right? That's all pretty bad now. You know what we should do? What I should do is take a piece of paper. We'll take a piece of paper, we'll put up here, and we'll rub it and we'll get what this pattern is ahead of time. We'll know where this angle is, where this hole is supposed to be, all that, so that we have a reference for later on. And something like that. why it rots out. Just trap that stuff in there and just sits there and stays wet forever. Now I'm gonna get into an air gun. I'm gonna clean some of that up a little bit. I'm gonna come over with the patch panel and maybe we'll start whittling that down to what we want to go for. I want to clean some of this up too.
So I'm still kind of going back and forth how I want to try to tackle this in. This curve is going to be hard to make because this panel already has a curve to it. If it was flat, not so bad. You roll it, put it on a shrink or stretcher, and you can put the kind of a curve to it. But we're kind of working after the fact. I laid it up there. This is the body line that is there. I am going to cut it back to right here, give us some relief room. And I got to try to come up with something to try to support this while I tap on that part of it. I don't know if I want to try making it out of a piece of wood or not, or just not sure. So I trimmed a little bit more away where it's not needed just so we can kind of get try to get a better fold through here. What about if we take it and we just clamp it to the body? Maybe if we want, put a, a, a tack or two on it and then try rolling the edge using the car before we cut any of this away and hammer right on it. Try to use it as a dolly. Considering it's the right pattern, right? Let's see what happens. See if that works for us. Good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Here's some taps, see what happens. I wonder if we should put a slice or two in it to let it do its thing, what do you think? I, I don't see it. I see it making this real lumpy if I try doing this one. Let's go a little more. You want to try heating it? All right.
I can say I'm crazy about that edge. It definitely did a and a turn, you know. I'm gonna work on that. Yeah, I'm not all that crazy out. That came out. But uh I'm gonna go over to the anvil, kinda work on it and tap on it on the anvil, see if I can take some of the I wonder if I should just cut that right there, like I said. Just too much metal right there. Maybe put a weld in it. As I said, I'm making that, that gradual turn right there. It's doing the about face. So yeah. The beatings begin. So one problem the panel has, when I folded this over, it made this edge completely flat instead of having a little bit of a curve to it. So. You're gonna go come over to the shrinker stretcher and see if we can help that out. So what this does inside here is two jars that are going down and pushing together, pulling down and pushing together, curving it this way. The one on the other side does the opposite. It's got the curve to it now. Got the little curve. We'll trim this back once we figure out what the lip is. But we're just trying to make this body line and this roll. Could you see that? <laughs> this body line and this curve in the right location. And then we'll slice back after we're done. Uh, you know, the correct reveal afterwards. It's okay. All right, so I'd say we nibble away. Let's try right above that damage. Let's see if we can peel this outer skin back away. I cut it right there for now too. I'll bring it back after I'm done cutting. So it took a little more time, cut some metal off underneath the bottom side of that. So we just have that single lip and kind of looking at it. it looks decent from here again from the straight on point it's going which i'm not crazy about but i don't know if i'm gonna bother they want to have it off again i may try working see how this is a straight line let's try making this part i could probably walk it down and make it a little bit more of a curve here so we take away from it on this side we'll leave this part of it alone and we just got to put a little bit more of a bend in the sheet metal, it looks like, right in that area. So I'll, I'll try to kick it a little bit further over here and see if that will make it so it lays flat. Every place else looks good. We're going to come back. We're going to slice this, both of them at the same time, once everything else is in a known area. So these two will butt right up to each other and then cut that. But I want to work from this corner over because this is, you know, going to stay where it's going to stay. There we go. That's a little better. It's pretty much up where it needs to be. I worked on that lip. I'm going to take a scribe and go behind the back of that circle and scribe right around it so we know where that circle needs to be out here. I well, you can see it, there's a scribe circle. I'm going to try something. It's called a knockout punch. You drill a hole that's that diameter. You can put the punch through it. And it's basically, it's you know two dies that go together and cut the metal. Hopefully, it does not distort the panel too much, but we're gonna find out. Probably, if we go, if we go this way with it instead of this way, we're gonna find out. We get that whole drill. Let's see how well this works for us. Go for it. <coughs> Noise alert. Nice. 
worked out pretty good, huh? There's my little plug that's supposed to go in there fits. We're good. I right, so did some more trimming. I, I the panel behind this is just down about a half inch. Now I tripped, trimmed all that off. The whole alignment look came out great, and I'm to the point now where I'm gonna. That mark is where this panel goes under. I'm gonna cut both of them at the same time, and that should give us a you know pretty perfect uh, butt end to put together because after that I'm going to trim this little lip over here so the whole panel can go that way a hair and hopefully that hair will close up that and close up that. Wish me luck. I think we did. Alright, finish trimming both of those off. And that should do it for us. It's fit up about as much as I'm going to be able to do. A uh, butt joint there, and a butt joint there, and the rest is going to be a lap going across. And I'm going to use the heel of the hammer when I'm tacking to close that gap up, get, close that gap up, get a tack. To kind of do the same going down the line. I'm going to do that first because I don't have a really good way to get behind it and clamp it unless I start ripping all the interior out. But that should do for us. We can get that buzz down and we'll probably work from away from the top down because the, the, that's the least important. That gap and again the wheel well clipping over here which looks like it's probably going to come out pretty good. Uh, enough talking, let's get the welding. Bigger one. One with the gear. One with the gear. That's not so bad. <laughs> it's not so great. It's not so bad. Here with a flapper disc, we we'll get it knocked down. The I danced around a bunch of different places, let it cool off. Do a couple down here, let them cool off. Back, jump back around up here, and uh, feels pretty good. This panel feels nice and flat. That one feels nice and flat. Went over here, some lead started coming out of it. It's got leaded in seam somewhere because lead sort of. I kind of wiped it with my finger to kind of make it smooth again. But yeah, let's go with the flapper disc. Smoother out. Smooth, I say. And then after it's ground. 
I think we will be just fine. And once we put a little little bondo over it, you know, feather out just nice. That gap feels good going across there. I came and I ground this to get a, the correct width going around. That looks better. A little pointy right there. I'm not gonna fuss over it too much. You can see where, you know, the hammering we did to try to mold that corner. But again, a little skim coat. Bondo will take care of that. The seams meet. I got a pinhole. I gotta go back and weld that. That feels pretty good too. It's looking pretty straight though. Let's, uh, I'm gonna go take care of them and then we're gonna throw some primer on this. You can get red oxide. How close do you think it's gonna be? Let that tack up for a sec. So how well do you think cherry red is going to match? Of course, I just went by the cap. It actually looks fairly close on the cap, but I've, I've come to know that <laughs> what the cap color is, what it really is, is two different things. So we'll miss the coat on it. That's actually not too bad. I'm gonna let that tack up a little bit and then we'll give her a good one. All right, how about a nice wet coat? Starting to look a little on the lipsticky side, ain't it? Not terrible, but not exactly what the color <laughs> is on it. You let that one, I'll hit it with a heat gun, speed it up a little bit, and then uh, give her one last wet coat and we'll call it. And for the last one. Catch the end of the wheel well. We'll call that a day. It's a little. I think lipstick's probably the, probably the best way to color it. It's like a red cherry lipstick. It's a little lighter. That's where you can see the original color. Right there. Just 
Still not bad. Better than Rustles. Alright, see so how we go. We made that with the uh, able to plug our hole. The bolt broke off when I took it apart, so I just welded another one on the back of it. Not painted yet, but. Might have to put a shim behind it <laughs> on the lower piece just a little bit. So you get for eyeing it, right? Yeah. Definitely have to put something behind that to make it rock out. You rocking out? Right, rotate it. I rotate it a lot. Cheat by putting it on an angle. <laughs> Good enough for now. You can fudge with that later, but that's not terrible. Ain't great, that's not terrible. I like it. A lot better than the big gaping holes that were in it, huh? That's much better. Whoops. You guys are taking a nap. Yeah. Rubber sticking out of the door. Pulled that away so I can get in there to weld it. Not bad for no Bondo. <laughs> it looks better than the rest of the car with Bondo. So I think the next step, uh, again, I was just trying to get it so that it'll get, it'll get a sticker. It still has a whole section of quarter panel that needs to, to go on it yet, but, you know, for now, I'm happy with uh, moving forward with what we got. I think the next thing is uh, we should probably put an engine together for it. Might be a good idea, huh? Get it so at least we can uh, yard drive it, and then from that point, we can start picking away at, you know, brakes, electrical, and, and those kind of things. And get it so that we can uh, put a plate on it and get a sticker on it. All right, guys, I'm turning it in. I'm done for the day. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me and doing a little bit of wrenching, a little bit of welding, a little rust in your eyes. All right, till the next one. I'll see you then. Later, guys. Looking at this side, don't like this one fit all that great either. <laughs> Making excuses. And also, well, I'll take one more second. So... I know people are going to go, you know, you didn't do anything with the rust and all that behind it. I'm just going to shoot bar and chain oil down through all the holes, access, and then where the uh, sill plate was and all. And I'm just going to soak that whole area with oil. It's throughout the whole car. Even if the areas that you did go and get, it's just going to blow out somewhere else. So for me, when you get these rusty old cars, the best bet I found is just really soak all those areas with oil and keep them dry. Once they're, when the oil goes on, you want the car very dry then it makes a barrier between moisture and the metal. If its car is wet like it, you know, it is right now, you're actually going to make water trapped with oil and then, you know, cause an issue. So as the car dries out in here, we'll come back and hit all those places with barn chain oil and pickle them and uh, should do us quite well. All right, now I'm done. See ya.